much. Welcome to Mrs. Butterscotch's Butter Biscuits with me, Mrs. Butterscotch. Let's make a podcast called Mrs. Butterscotch's Butter Biscuits. No, just Butter Biscuits with Mrs. Butterscotch. Butter Biscuits with Butter Butterscotch. (laughs) Mrs. Butterscotch. (laughs) Mrs. Butterscotch. So, story. Dear Patty. No. Dear Patty, I received your fan letter and I just want to thank you, Patty. Patty, Patricia M. Steiner, I wanted to thank you. Thank you for, for being a fan, for always holding out for me when when the, my co host is trying to. Mrs. Butterscotch does not have a co host. Oh, yeah, no. She's not a host of this podcast. I'm. Then the, the, the main thing of Butterscotch <laughs> podcast. Yeah, of the Buttered Biscuits podcast. Yes, but this that's is what ha- it is. This is Hello, I'm Listening. You know, only because you're, the, you're recording your podcast at the same time that I'm recording my <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so you're using the, our microphones while we're yes, recording of our I podcast? Yes, I set this thing up. I wait here. <laughs> and when you start recording, I record mine. Well, well, you were trying to record yours. Can we write a theme song for Buttered Biscuits, the podcast? Mrs. Butterscotch has a biscuit. <laughs> Mrs. Butterscotch has a butter biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Wait, I was going to tell a story. <laughs> tell a story. <laughs> no, it's going to say... Goodbye, Mrs. Butterscotch. Goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye. <laughs> Fuck you, Mrs. Butterscotch. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the thing is, wait, wait till she leaves. Okay. Uh, the thing is, I actually like Mrs. Butterscotch. Absolutely, I heard <laughs> this. I knew it. But I have to play the role. You know, it makes the podcast more fun if I play the role like I hate her. The people love me. I'm the most <laughs> beloved character in the show. <laughs> the only character. Exactly. In the show. Exactly. It makes me the most beloved. <laughs> or the most hated. It's probably the most hated. Sometimes you look at it as a bright thing. Or the most black. Okay. Most black hair. And Patty really sent me a love letter. Okay, but can I tell me a story? Now? Yes, please. Go ahead, dear. <laughs> Go ahead. So, Don't waste our fucking time, you <laughs> So my mom texted me. After listening to probably a couple of episodes, and she loves Mrs. Butterscotch. Of course, and, and everybody does. She texted my husband, Voifi, that she loved. She didn't. Oh, she didn't text me. She texted Voifi. Yeah, she texted me about how much she loves Mrs. Yeah. Butterscotch, and then I mean, you bragged about it to me, like your mom loves Mrs. Butterscotch. She's a fucking icon, Danielle. And then I texted her and I said, "Don't encourage him." <laughs> Why? Because we don't need. Yeah. That much, Mrs. Butterscotch. Yes, And we then do. my mom responded that she loves her so much and she wants a full episode of an interview with Mrs. Butterscotch. So we might need to... Oh, that, that would be fun, though. To do like a like a short one, like a 20-minute episode where Mrs. Butterscotch... <laughs> you can just ask her you questions. Sure? I actually would be up for that. Let's do that. And Mrs. Butterscotch has to truth, truthfully answer them. Yeah. We could hook her up to a, 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 lie, a, detector. a lie detector. <laughs> And everything would be a lie because it's just you. Well, it do- then yeah, it's not just me. It's two different characters. And talk at the same time and go. <laughs> if we talk at the same time, we just talk over each other. You know? uh, sure. The thing is, I can record something afterwards and put it over. <laughs> of course, we're two different, different characters, characters didn't you? Know? Why would you say the exact same thing? Oh, it's true. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay hey so what's really interesting um i looked at the so first of all we 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 uh a lot of people listen a lot of new people listen to the podcast so welcome to all the new people welcome and uh thank you for the crazy feedback for the ivf thing and also the mandela effect that i don't know why but people really like that one mm-hmm. for some reason and what's really interesting, I mean, we talked about this, but Vietnam is like the third top country mm-hmm. or, or, yeah, or le- location uh, on earth that listens to our podcast, which is fucking nuts. 
So everybody from Vietnam. Um, we, Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah, we greet you and um, yeah, we hope you like what you hear. <laughs> the fucking nonsense we make up all day. <laughs> and of course, Mrs. Butterscotch. But Mrs. Butterscotch has to go now because she has some biscuits in her oven. Butter biscuits, of course. <laughs> Don't laugh at Mrs. Butterscotch. Mrs. Butterscotch, do you eat anything other than butter biscuits? I actually don't. <laughs> I tried once, but I puked so hard that I had to stop. And how much do you weigh? <laughs> and a healthy for 550 pounds. <laughs> I have to use the, the, the scale at the zoo. Where, where is myself. your accent from, Mrs. Butterscotch? Oh, it's all over the place, you know. <laughs> I've lived in so many countries, I can't even tell you. I've lived... well, well, we'll have to have you back and have a proper interview <laughs> to learn more about you. Of course, we have, to, we have to talk about my rate, but yes, sure. I'm not doing it for free. Don't look at me like that. Your rate? Yeah, sure. Of an agent? That's not what I heard. What did you hear? I heard replace one letter and I heard something completely different. I was like, why Nate? would we talk about that? A Nate? What is a Nate? Oh boy. A bait? Never mind. A Kate? A late? <laughs> a fate? It's not the first letter. <laughs> a seat? What are you talking about? Don't worry about it. Okay. Bye. Bye. So Mrs. Butterscotch is, might be gone for the whole episode now. <laughs> Who knows? Unless your butter biscuits are done <laughs> we certainly baking. Don't. Oh, my butter biscuits are done. No, baking. they're not. <laughs> yes, you want to taste one? It's no, a really good, mm, I don't think they're vegan. They're vegan. It's a vegan. They're butter. vegan. Vegan. I think that's more proof that Mrs. Butterscotch is voicey that she says <laughs> vegan instead of vegan. <laughs> Maybe she might not be native. That'll to... be a good test when we interview her. Just give her a bunch of V words and see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, does. as she said, she lived in many countries, so you know, she also might speak different languages. Okay. Yeah. So today we are. Oh man, that has been a long intro. It's so. too much, Mrs. Butterscotch. Yeah. So everybody, we are talking about music today, because that's the only thing we tr came up with. No, it's not the only thing. It's the only thing you came up with. I came up with eight different topics. And you're like, no, we need too much Actually, you were them. able to name three of those eight. Because I named four or five. At, it really is at work. Yeah. The next it's time I forget my list in my asshole. Like, oh, no, I forgot the list. You know, them. when we took the break, <laughs> yes. we had this whole <laughs> argument before we recorded that podcast say, discussing whether or not we were going to take a break. Yes. And I said... I just need a short break because then I can give myself some time to like think of some things at my own pace because things have been just so crazy lately. So I just have like a little time to think of some stuff, have a little break, and then we can come back. Yeah. And that's what I did. And I actually wrote down not a whole lot considering the long break, but I wrote down eight topics. The thing is we need to and make time once a week. 30 minutes or maybe yeah, to sit down 20 and sit down and just topics and exactly and brainstorm because plan. that's much easier with the looming podcast ahead yeah. like maybe do it every saturday night every or sunday. sunday night or every sunday or yeah i think sunday is better because saturday is always like oh, yeah. i have a shoot oh no i have to do this oh, i have to go see well, andy oh i have to I wash my have car to see andy later. Oh, I have to... <laughs> really are you seeing andy later yeah. i don't want to go no no, we're having a mandate. You always have a mandate. Yeah. We have man things to discuss. <laughs> we actually talk very girly about girl stuff. <laughs> and did you make out with her? Oh, did you touch? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. Anyways, we're talking about music. Yeah. So we talk about music today. And I thought it would be interesting to just maybe quickly i think it's a very broad topic and i want to go like a deep dive because maybe mm. we do another one yeah. depends how well it's received but i think it would be interesting to just talk about like influences in your coming up of music or introductions into music that you can remember and why and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah and where it came from maybe just start with that maybe where where got your like early music things um, that you were introduced to, where did did they come from? Me and my and dad, your dad, mostly, yeah. 
I yeah. mean, I don't want to say my mom didn't influence me with her music at all because she did, but uh, I, I mean, think your mom's music taste is not great. Is awesome. <laughs> I just wanted to. I can hear. <laughs> I can hear her say what? <laughs> no, she does the long one. What? <laughs> that was for you. I got you. Prank. She's gr like great. No, she has taste a great taste in music. in music. That's true. But so does my dad. I was so I. I He does, yeah. I think a lot of my earlier music stuff came from my dad. Like, I was really, at a very young age, into Frank Sinatra, still into Frank Sinatra. Um, like, <laughs> three-year-old me was singing along to Frank Sinatra, which is kind of weird. Um, but also things like, the, I mean, oldies. I grew up on oldies. So, Beatles, Grateful Dead, Bob Marley. Um Led Zeppelin, Doors, things like that. So I grew up on that music, and that kind of shaped my what I what I listened to, because I would base what I listened to based on like what I like already. Obviously, like most people do. So I would mostly seek out stuff for like people who weren't making music anymore. So it's all stuff from like my dad's childhood, my mom's childhood. Um. But I, I don't know. That's at least where it started. I don't know how far you want me to go now, but that's where it started for me. Was, that's 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 fine. That um, stuff. It's funny because I don't remember. I couldn't even tell you the taste of my mu my mom's music. Like, she's very similar to my sister. I love my life. life. <laughs> I am powerful. <laughs> I am. Are we allowed to sing that much on this? Yeah. I don't really um, know how that works. <laughs> and so I couldn't tell you what my mom listens to or listened to yeah i mean now it's that kind of stuff or like church music it's weird like hymns and yeah it's weird and, choirs and my dad i mean i know i always knew like elvis and yeah. bonnie yeah. m and stuff oh, like elvis, that i forgot about elvis yeah um beatles he liked elton john stuff like that but he also liked a lot of like austrian folk no not folk but pop Aust Aust Austropop, as it mm -hmm. called, Reinhard Fen Fenrich, and, and, and some of those who were really big in the 80s, 70s and 80s. So uh, I was not really influenced by that music. And also our household was not very, like there was almost never just music running purposefully. I okay. mean, my dad had like some vinyls, but, you know, up in the, in the, in our living room, A room we we most of the time if we listen to something we listen to the radio or we had like cassette tapes with stories you know mm -hmm. but i was never really listening to music up until i was like in in middle school okay where there was like always music yeah, it's really it's really interesting because uh, thinking uh back like i I was really introduced uh to music when i went to Linz and mm -hmm. was you know with other you know, children my age in a class and we and then i that's where i got really introduced into like lincoln park that was like super heavily listened to that time that was like 2001 2002 like mm -hmm. right around the meteora age um and two three um but um that's where it started for me mm -hmm. which is kind of weird because i would say i'm the only one with a proper taste in music or with at least a, a broad span in yeah. music compared to other my other family members yeah i think it was so different for us because we are a house of musicians yeah so, sure that's know, always my, different my dad plays guitar and he sings my mom sings she played a little piano and my brother and i grew up to also play musical instruments and sing and i don't know it's just kind of always been but the weird thing is we're really the only ones in the in like the extended family that are like that it's like weird it's just our group of four like back back looking back i wish that we i was more exposed to music because i i feel like it would have helped me to be more i mean i was always a creative kid but i don't know i feel i feel like music shapes you in a lot of forms and i think mm. also and that's what a lot of uh scientists say and there are a lot of studies about early listening to music that it 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 changes how you think it changes the neurological pathways in your brain and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so for for a child or even for a baby growing up listening to music yeah. can be very beneficial yeah and i mean people say yeah you put headphones on the belly 
That's kind I of a know, myth, but, though. But no, no. I've it, read it totally into that is. a little bit it now totally that I'm pregnant, is. and I because I thought about that too. Like, okay, and mm. technically you can do yeah, it, but it's just but the it base, doesn't basically. make a. Nah, they, the thing is, they can hear the sounds, but in the field of vibrations and stuff. But yeah. it's not so much um, from what I've read, at least, where it's not so much influential in that sense. Mm. Versus when they're actually, you know, sure makes sense. But but that's what I'm saying. That's that's. I don't know. I wish that I would have had more of that. But I'm still surprised that I have. I think a decent taste in music. Even I though think I we also grew up in a good time for music, you know, because every everything sure. we've talked about, like how technology changed on this podcast, like from when we were kids to now, it's an insane that the change is absolutely it's a great insane. Episode, by the way. But like we, our generation experienced probably more than maybe any generation is going to experience. I would say in in, a in terms of the sense, maybe tech, at least that's for what now. I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Like in, in a technological sense, and how how it's grown in such a short time. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think it's similar with music because we've been through. A, it's kind of in some ways some of, some music patterns are cycling back now. Mm. Like from, you know, when like our parents were kids or even music before that is kind of circling back like it's resurfacing and becoming more popular. I mean, again. sure, with streaming and everything, people and also with social media, people um, like Bonnie M, for example, Rasputin. Mm. I mean, that yeah. that song became massive again because of a fucking social media yeah. clip clipping and they used it and reused yeah. it. And, and it's kind of cool to see um, music getting rediscovered by mm -hmm. different generations. Um, and also good for the artists because some of those artists, you know, never had a hit again or yeah. haven't had a hit for years. And then all of a sudden they're back because of that. And people want to listen to them live again and stuff mm -hmm. like that. All right. It's pretty interesting. But I don't know. It's it's um, going back to like I started listening to Linkin Park. Linkin Park was one of my first favorite bands. And then Metallica. Metallica was also... The thing is, I know that they're not like the best band musically, but I really like the riffs. I I like the memories that I connect to most of the music, mm -hmm. like Black Album and then the earlier stuff, Sink Anger. Um, yeah, all all their early albums before two thousand three, two thousand four, basically. And yeah, and that's when when I started to, you know, obviously the the heavy metal phase. Almost every boy had that at that time like slipknot and in flames and all that stuff I mean, that heavy metal like punk metal like what yeah you know, like emo screamo stuff i mean slipknot is not that slipknot is heavy metal okay yeah and in flames is in uh in flames is melodic metal um but yeah all types of metal stuff and then which is kind of interesting then it kind of like i i I was never the kid who was like super into one thing. I, w I always branched out and Martin, my neighbor, who introduced me to a lot of movies, also introduced me to a lot of music and he gave me a lot of music, which um, his taste is also very different to mine. But like Modest Mouse, for example, and a lot of Brit pop and Brit mm. rock, I got introduced. And then Bernie, also one of my best friends, he was also very progressive in music. Like Rage Against the Machine was something he introduced me to very early. Rage. And then Preoccupine Tree, which I'm still a huge fan of, Stephen Wilson with that and all like very progressive stuff, like progressive rock metal, which then f kind of departed into more than that. Like I then I branched out into pop, rock, folk, uh, rap. I mean, you've jumped -pop. way too far ahead now. No, I know. But but I, I don't want to I don't want to it like I don't want to go into the whole thing. I'm just saying that. Um, I never was, I knew a lot of kids who were like, no, I don't listen to that, that shit, blah, blah, blah. And I, I never tried to look at it like that. I tried to listen, to, I basically listen to anything. And if I, yeah. if, if it makes me feel something, if I want to dance to it, if I, if I like what I hear, if it's catchy, if it's nice lyrics, whatever, then I listen to it. You know, I never just said no, only because there's a label of that on it. I don't want to listen to it. And mm. a lot of kids did that back then because they wanted to be cool. Yeah. I was also that way where I was kind of outside the norm of not always because, you know, so my family, we grew up very Christian <laughs> as we've talked about Jesus on this podcast. Runner, and so, you know, Jesus we're, runner, I was part of like worship team at church and, you know, when I was younger, like 
but until maybe 14, 15. You know, I'm going to make so much fun of you with with our kid. I'm going to tell your kid that, our kid that, and then My we're, going kid. To, we're going to laugh at, at you together. We're teaming up. I'm going to say, do you remember when mommy was in choir in church? Hey, but what if our kid wants to be part of that stuff? And then you're making fun of her too. Not choir is fine, but not church. If she wants to be a part of church. Then I have to make... <laughs> <laughs> then I have to change her my decision. opinion. Then I have to change my opinion again. But it's until then, I can make fun of you. <laughs> yeah, you made me lose my train of thought. See, you notice how I never interrupt you when you're talking. And then when I start talking within five seconds, yeah, you're like I'm, making jokes or having to... I'm, my mind is me. fluid. You know, I'm like everywhere. Yeah, and you can also just... Psh, okay. Psh, <laughs> Mrs. Butterscotch. No, she's not. So in my family, we grew up in kind of a Christian household. Not super, super strict, but, you know, there were still things I wasn't allowed to do. Like I wasn't allowed to listen to 103.7 Kiss FM, which was very, they played a lot of rap. They played a lot of, Mm. and, you know, rap at that time was very misogynistic, very, very much so. And so, not only that, but also, I and mean, sexist, and it was just sure, not great. Sure, yeah. Fair. Not, I mean, not all of it, but a lot of it. So, a lot of the stuff that you'd hear on the radio was very much hateful towards. I mean, sure, it, rap was always very expressionist. Sure, expressionist. but it, it had a theme. <laughs> sure, in the early two thousands. I mean, you you had to choose the artist. I think, like, yeah, but I mean, more on the radio, like the popular radio songs. Yeah, but or, NWA, for example. Yeah, but I never would have been allowed to listen to that either. I mean, they were against cops and they put all the hate against cops, for example. It was more swearing in my family. I mean, sure, almost every every episode. Granted, on the radio in the U.S., you're not allowed to swear. (laughs) They're just silent. It's silent. Or if it's really a bad station, they bleep, like, beep it out and it's horrible. It's horrible. Um, But so I didn't grow up listening to, like, what all the other kids were listening to because I didn't really have a lot of access to it. And that was before, you know, internet music and things like that so then i i was homeschooled as well for quite a while and then in fourth grade when we moved i mean technically third grade i was also in school for the first time but that was private school and blah blah blah. so fourth grade i started public school and that's when i like started to meet all my friends and they started to influence what i listened to and i had this massive at that time it was like 1990 2000 and Britney Spears, sure. like early Britney Spears, first album. In sync. In sync. Some Backstreet Boys, but I was an In sync girl. Big streets, big. All right. In sync is better. Um, yeah, way better. Oh, no, the, they're the fucking way same. Better. They're the fucking same. At least there are no rapists in In sync. Oh, there are rapists in Backstreet Boys. In Nick. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh wow, I did not know that. <laughs> is was he? I mean, using... assault. He's. He's like been under did investigation he pay for a or while. Or did he, is he I don't. Or? I didn't really follow the story that much, but it was recent, like within the last two years. Oh, okay. That it came out, yeah. Yeah, and in sync, they're good boys. I mean, for now, they're good boys. Um, but yeah, so total in sync nerd had the sneakers, the backpack, everything you could possibly have. <laughs> Loved him. <laughs> Not kidding. Um. So that was kind of for a long time. That was my music genre. I went away from like all of the oldie stuff, stuff. except for the Beatles. I always was a Beatles fan, but I kind of went away from everything else. My dad used to like to play Johnny Cash in the car and I used to make fun of him because I hated it. But I have found that most of the music I made fun of when I was a kid is music I actually adore now. It's like Johnny Cash is just God. Um, But... I was also then all over the place. So once that phase kind of ended with the pop stuff, I kind of went into the rap stuff a little bit. Um, And then I went into very, like an indie phase, like a super indie phase. And I found that was the joys of LimeWire. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. (laughs) LimeWire. You remember LimeWire. Just download Download MP3s and you wait for four four hours to download (laughs) one MP3. That's great. An hour or something. That's great. Um, but you know, you also like could like listen to 30 second clips on iTunes Mm. of music. So a lot of times I would just scroll through iTunes and find music like similar to this band or that band 
or commercials were a great way to yeah, find yeah, bands yeah, yeah. because yeah, a yeah. lot of the time commercials I've, played really good music and Coldplay was to me, for example like Coldplay yeah uh, to me through a commercial and I remember it was for a movie that was playing in the TV yeah on the TV and I asked my cousin, cousin like you know the band you know that song and he's like yeah that's um uh, what is it called clocks clocks from yeah. Coldplay and that's how I I got introduced into Coldplay was like two four or something. <laughs> It's so funny. But it's in five. No, 2005. That's when the, the album mm -hmm. came out. The second one. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. It's but super there's crazy. a lot of there's a lot of a lot of music that I listened to. I found from from commercials, which yeah. is interesting. And I mean, a lot of times it was an iTunes commercial because they had the best commercials, or like a Coca Cola commercial. But at that time, it wasn't as easy to find out what it was. <laughs> yeah, sure. So you really had to search for it. I mean, we, they had the internet then, so we, but you still really had to search, like, yeah. this commercial I with, mean, and then listen to the song lyrics and, like, type in some yeah, of the song yeah. lyrics to yeah, find yeah. the song. It was insane. Yeah, she's um, what made that so much easier. Yeah. But I found the Bowerbirds that way. If you don't know the Bowerbirds, go listen to the Bowerbirds. I don't think they're still making music. Uh, great, great indie band. Um... But yeah, I, I got into this indie phase and then I had a massive ska phase. Massive. I don't like ska. You know, I understand the people who don't like ska. If I would be introduced to ska now, I might not like it. But I'm also, I, I have a very jazzy background and I a very reggae music. background. And so it's kind of a good combination yeah. of like big band and reggae. Yeah. And, and I get the music. I get the, I get the, the appeal. Yeah. But, um... I don't know. I, uh, that, for example, I don't enjoy listening to it. Yeah. Therefore, I don't like it personally. But I, I don't think it's bad music at all. Like I, love, I would I consider love, I would scream, still... scream metal bad music, where they just scream and you didn't hear anything <laughs> of the lyrics and stuff like that. That. But I never. I never for example, I, to I consider that bad music personally. Even though I would never, you know, tell anybody, "Hey, stop listening to blah blah," because I. Yeah, it's I mean, still it's music. art. It's subjective. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, but I had a really big scoff. It's like Real Big Fish. Oh, Real Big Fish was the best. I saw them so many times live. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my... I, it was all over the place. And then I kind of went back to my hippie phase after that, where I was back to my my roots, so to say. And I was listening to all of my oldies stuff again. Um, I don't know. Today, it's kind of the same. I'm all over the board with my music. I, I don't really have... I don't know... Uh, anywhere from Grateful Dead to Prince to Billie Eilish to, you know, it, it's literally all over the board. Yeah, we listen to everything. But to, I'm also much pickier today, I realize. So I'm I'm pickier about, I, I don't like pop music as much as I did when I was younger or a teenager. The stuff that's nostalgic, I still love because it's the stuff I grew up on. But, you know, like Green Day, I'm obsessed with Green Day. <laughs> and... You know, there there are just things that you grew up with that you'll always love. Even stupid songs that are that you would absolutely hate if they came out today, but because you grew up with them, you always love them. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't like most pop music today. Most of it actually gives me. Is, <laughs> yeah, it, it, the thing is, <laughs> because I mean, it sounds all the same to the me. That's the problem. Pop music is interesting. There, I think there are some artists today, like I'm. And people who know me or know that I'm totally into Taylor Swift right yeah. now, and I don't know where they came from. But although I, I agree with that, I, I fucking love her music, and not everything. Obviously, she has a ton of music, and yeah. there's some things I don't like. But overall, she's a fucking phenomenal artist. I, I think, agree. and her music is most of it is really good and well written. Well, it's almost and always passion project. It's almost exactly. always this is what I feel and like doing, so I'm gonna do it. And right, and and now with the whole. Taylor's version where she basically re-records all her albums to get to get all the rights back which is so fucking cool because re she revisits with the tools and with the knowledge that she has today mm. that, that music that is decades old I don't know I, I'm or, uh, Olivia Rodrigo for example is also she's a fucking phenomenal artist like 21 or something or 22 I think even younger maybe uh, Girl in Red we saw Girl in Red was fantastic that 
woman is fucking amazing and she's up and coming and she's super cool. Well, I mean, and, and top and of the list for me is Billy. Uh, obviously, Billy Eilish, and that's all considered pop. It's the all most fucking creative pop. artist I think I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, and like, that's all pop. I mean, though. she and Phineas, that just the most creative yeah. human beings yeah. making music out of. But it's sounds all pop. that are like what is that? But it's all pop. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. Mo the, I would say 95, 90 percent of yeah. pop. Yeah. But no, out today I just don't. I the don't thing like is, it. I don't I, get I, it. I, I, yeah, I, I I agree. I think. Or it feels like there is there lazy. There there, there are different layers of pop music yeah. these days, and there's some pop music that is generic, and try to they try to ride a wave, try mm -hmm. to get like some clicks on TikToks to get reused their music get reused and yeah. to get like uh, uh streams on spotify and there are some pop music that they just put out music because they want to post malone for example i was just gonna say post malone i mean yeah. he technically is also he i wouldn't say pop but he also goes into the bop pop genre yeah. he's doing a little rap but it's also very creative and mm -hmm. he just does the shit because he wants to do that and i mean i would put macklemore in that category too Macklemore is rap, rap, but he's also but he's, he's also pop. got pop. Sure, I mean, especially I, I mean, love his music. Most of his music is pop. Yeah, and, and or Ed Sheeran, for example, like his yeah. latest album was phenomenal. Yeah. It was really good, emotional. well written, emotional, and again, like the album that he did before was very like, oh, I'm putting this out because I want to put something out, and it felt very commercialized like completely away from the heartfelt the original and the very personal lyrics that he had put in his music before that mm -hmm. and the new album is back to that and now he has an own his own label and he's releasing a new album i think in a, a couple of weeks and that alone is very exciting so i i love pop music i'm all over pop music but obviously it needs to be in some way or form um touching me mm -hmm. if it's the lyrics if it's the the music if it's everything together you know i don't know and that's why i never I, like if someone would ask me these days i mean nobody asks that question anymore because nobody really cares about that but what music do you listen to and i'm like everything i listen to literally yeah, everything if, if i think it's good if i personally think it's good up to my taste then i listen to it mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's ska metal rock progressive rock, broadway <laughs> broadway whatever yeah sure i i listen to it. it i don't know uh you know i just thought of this big it's yeah. super it's not really random but you know when i was talking earlier about how i really liked big band as well uh if anyone else likes big band go listen to big bad voodoo daddy because good god they are fucking awesome <laughs> just putting it out there yeah, I, I, what I really like about music these days, I mean, Spotify kind of destroys the artistry about it because uh, artists get paid shit mm -hmm. over streaming. And I hope that will change. And I think it will change at some point, uh, hopefully sooner than later. But what I like about streaming is the access to music and the yeah. access to a lot of music. And I like, re list I just like listening to random playlists. Mm. Um, for example, I have this playlist saved called Women of Folk. Mm-hmm. And it's just folk music by women and it's there are so many cool artists and I discovered a lot of art, really cool artists through the playlist. And I do that a lot where I just, you know, have a playlist on and if I yeah. like a song, I, I save it or I look up the artist. And I, I found some really cool artists over that. Mm. I don't know. But yeah. Um yeah. I don't know. There's so much more to say, but I don't wanna go into no. into more of it. No, I just think I don't know, I think that's the beauty of music and that's why i love to you know i mean i was part of a band for a lot of years and with my brother and especially the band with my brother you know we making music together is something that's so special and so it, it's so individual it's mm. and that's that's why music is so important in my life because it really is so personal even if it's not your music it's so personal because your tastes in music are so personal and you know you choose to listen to certain music based on your mood and i feel like that's, that's really what special that's, that's what it is yeah. that's a really special thing to be able to say i'm feeling like this so i'm going to listen to this music mm -hmm. and it either 
keeps me in this mood because I want to stay in it, mm. whether it's sadness or happiness yeah. or, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Or, you know, how music can trigger certain moods. You know, you hear a song and, I mean, I have, there's one song that if I hear it, I instantly cry because Which I'm one? Billy Joel. It's Billy Joel, um, Good Night, My Angel. Really? Let's try that. No, let's not. We can't play it on the podcast anyway. Sure, I can. No, please don't. Because it's a sad, it's a happy, but it's a sad thing. Okay. But it's a, it's a great song. It's a great song. No, that's what but, I, you know, it's just that's music what is I love so about powerful. Music too. And that's what I always liked about music. And that's why I never got to understand people. I don't understand people who's, who say they don't really have a taste in music in the sense that they don't really listen to specific music. They just listen to the radio, for example. I don't understand that yeah. because... Well, I mean, yeah, you might have to rephrase that because we don't have a specific taste in music either. No, but that's what I mean. They just say, no, I just listen to the radio or what's on the or radio. Or I don't listen to music. Or I don't listen to music. If people like, say that, I'm like, who are you? Like, I don't understand <laughs> it because, um, I don't know. It's proven that music does things in our brain and, and can trigger things, as you said. And I think... Um, music is also a gateway in a lot of ways you can feel with an artist but you can also release things you can feel much better after listening to a song um, you can cry and maybe you need to cry and, I mean, and it music can also can trigger that. memories that you maybe forgot about that are that, like way down in the back of right. your brain for example there's one song by um, the uh, 13th Sense mm -hmm. a 13th Sense is a, a British band um, I listened to them a lot like when I was in high school and there's one song and when i hear that song i can put it on right now and remember exactly the moment when i drove off with the school bus from milwaukee to chicago yeah i have i have there's two songs that come to mind i, I can't I actually can't think of which song it is but i know there's an avril lavigne song that when i was a kid if i would play it in the car and i'd be like sitting in the back seat of the car I would pretend that, you know, like in, in like 90s, 2000s movies when there was like someone sitting in a car and they're listening to music and they're driving either mm -hmm. away yeah. from their hometown or into a new town and yeah. they're like staring at the window and it's raining on the window. And it's like, <laughs> I would always act that out to this one song that Avril Lavigne plays. I don't know why. And the mm -hmm. other song was when I was in Germany and I was really, really homesick. Yeah. So I was in Germany for like three weeks, I think, three and a half weeks. Yeah. I was really homesick and I was into the 88 at that time and that was before the 88 was one of those bands they were so small i mean they're still not massively they're massively massive, known but, yeah, yeah. but a lot of people know them they're well known yeah and when i was listening to them they were like nobody knew who they were and i had this the song coming home i was mm -hmm. listening to and every time that song comes in i'm brought back to that moment yeah. in Germany, I see exactly where I was. Like mm. everything becomes so clear. Like, oh, that's where I was. This is what it looked like. This is what yeah, I was like doing. It's like smells and stuff. Sometimes it's, smells yeah, can the trigger same. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I think it's if you don't, I mean, sure, do what you do. I'm not telling you what to do or not to do. But I think if you're depriving yourself of good music, you're taking away a little bit of the human experience. Or if you're only listening to the same music all the time. I mean, right. everybody's guilty of it. I mean, sure. I do it too. I, you know, listen to Billie Eilish, probably listen to more than any, like more than any other artist. But I'm trying to branch out my music again <laughs> and listen to more music. But um, I think if you always only listen to either one kind of music or one artist or, you know, these 10 songs yeah then you're missing out yeah and in general i don't know uh, the typecasting of things like if you say no i don't listen to pop music because blah blah or i don't listen to folk or i don't listen to... i think music is very subjective and also music is not a lot of music these days you can't put in a box well and no two artists are the same so you know this folk artist you might not like but maybe you like for example the other folk artists or this folk art uh, artist has one album that is also very right. different and 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 you know not very folky or or the kind of folk you would enjoy something like that mm -hmm. so that alone um uh might might give you or might if you are if you don't listen to that because of preconceived like like uh, your your i don't know what to say but you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> don't deprive yourself of good music just no. be open to it um and also be bold if you if you and proud if you like something and and you know that 
uh, people shame other people like if you're you know in school or something or in a group and you would never admit to listening to a certain type of music be bold and be proud of it i mean it's your it's your you know that's what yeah, you like I mean, and not everybody needs to like what you like and you don't like everything other what other people like well obviously. that's the thing i mean i was just having this conversation with a coworker, and he listens very much a lot to drum and bass music and like electro pop like that kind of stuff and i can't stand it <laughs> most of the time because for me it's just like club music like it's noise it depends what it is but yeah it is good drum bass. i would say for the but the majority of it that i've heard at least is it's just not my it's not my thing but he the way he was talking about it he almost like excused himself for you know liking it and i was like it's it's your style of music you like it it's it's again it's art it's subjective if just sure, because i exactly. don't like it doesn't mean that it's bad music or just because a bunch of people don't like something doesn't mean it's bad also, I think it just means like that they don't like it it's very their personal cool taste. because it's very people come together and celebrate sure. it and that's so fucking cool the energy alone at this and he also concerts. has like emotional stories connected with that yeah. music where it's like you know everybody everybody feels different things with different music and that's yeah. kind of again the beauty I, and of I think, music i think yeah and i think you should be open uh, back when i was a kid i would probably would have never admitted to listening to taylor swift like if I <laughs> but now i'm like listen to taylor swift and i know that my some dad people, listens to taylor swift right and i know that some people give me either a stupid comment or like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but yeah that's i mean i like her music what should i do yeah. should i i mean i'm not only because other people say things like that i'm not going to not listen to her yeah, if sure. i like it so yeah that's it it's been too much too long um yeah uh if we put a Spotify thing, like on Spotify, if you listen to Spotify, we put like a little questionnaire in uh, the podcast. You can click on it and you can add what music you listen to, mm -hmm. or what band or whatever. You can give us also obviously suggestions if we haven't named anything that you listen to. Um, you can also head over to my, I thought of this while we were doing this podcast, and you can head over to my Instagram and like my personal one. And um, I'm going to make a highlight for music and because I want to do a little poll and just ask people like what's one song that makes you think of your childhood or something or one mm -hmm. song that makes you that's cool and so you can add yours and you can and then I might make a playlist out of it on do on that do that Spotify so you can do that too okay that's it um other than that please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet on Apple Spotify or wherever you listen to a podcast please head over to our Instagram uh, and follow us there because you can you know, see updates, new episodes, questionnaires, stories, whatever. And uh, we hear each other. Oh, no. And if you want to support us more, <laughs> head over to our Patreon, where Joe is still waiting. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. And I think Mrs. Butterscotch might need to say hi to Joe, too. Oh, <laughs> hello, Joe. I have been informed that you are one of the Patreon members for the podcast, Mrs. Butterscotch Butter Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you personally, and I will send butter biscuits your way. Yeah. Joe, if you don't get the butter biscuits, blame Blaise. <laughs> uh, blame Mrs. Butterscott. <laughs> I'll help her personally to, to package them. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.